today we're going to go over how to properly measure a dock pit to properly size a dock leveler and also total site survey for any other ancillary and other um, site conditions we might want to take into account when deciding what, what type of equipment we want at our loading dock. The three things we're going to want to have when doing a site survey or measuring a dock pit is, is a tape measure, a camera or cell phone with a camera, and a notepad or total site survey, which you can get from any systems LLC representative. There's a few keys to measuring a dock pit, and what we're really going to want to focus on is measuring the site conditions and the existing building as opposed to the existing equipment, because we can manufacture the equipment in such a way to fit the existing dock pit as opposed to manufacturing a dock leveler to match to match what's already existing in the in the pit so it's easier to change the dock leveler during the manufacturing process than it is to change the site conditions or the building conditions after the fact if a leveler is incorrect incorrectly made um, or we have incorrect dimensions so first off we're going to start by measuring everything that we might want to know as far as dimensions and conditions at the dock face so standing on the drive approach this black steel here is essentially mimicking our concrete poured loading dock or our existing dock. So one of the main dimensions we're going to want to have is the dock height. Standard dock height is right around 48 inches. It's not always perfect. Uh, we can see different dimensions, but uh, you want to take down that measurement. This dock is right at 48 inches. We want to measure the distance from the drive approach to the bottom of the pit floor so where the where the the bottom of the concrete pit starts down to the pit floor that's going to give us a dimension that we're going to want to know in case we're going to be adding any restraints now or in the future to make sure we have enough clearance for for all the, for that item um, we're going to want to measure the pit depth standard pit depths are 20 inches or 24 inches depending on the size and capacity of the leveler and just the type of manufacturer uh, and year that it was built, the dimensions have kind of standardized over time to be either 20 inches or 24 inches. This dock is at 20 inches. 20 inches in the front and roughly 19 or 19 and a half inches in the back. That's going to give us a slight half inch slope towards the front for any water or liquids to drain out onto the drive approach and not just sit and corrode in the the dock pit itself. Uh, we're going to want to me measure the lip of the dock leveler. So just the steel plate. Standard options are typically 16, 18, and 20 inches. This is a 16 inch lip. Uh, that's going to be something we want to know if we're replacing the dock leveler so we can match what the customer has existing. Uh, so there's no differences in how they're using the dock leveler or operational inefficiencies because they have something different than they used to have. We're also going to want to measure the bumper projection. So standard bumper projection is roughly four, four and a half inches. This is at four and a half inches. This is going to, this is going to tell us how far away from the dock face the truck is going to be sitting. That way um, we can accommodate different types of trucks. If there's a different slope on the drive approach, we may want to go with larger bumpers to keep the, the truck a little further away from the building. We can add an, a longer lip to compensate for some of that distance as well. All things to consider when we're looking at a new, a new loading dock for, uh, for a customer's application. Other things to keep in mind are going to be concrete poured cantilevers, which may be a poured concrete cantilever or a a section of concrete that is jetted out from the from the initial dock face or the foundation um, and we're going to want to get those dimensions as well we're going to want to see how deep that cantilever is and also the depth of the cantilever or the projection out from the building uh, to take that into account um, for any dock levelers or restraints that we may be looking at other things that we want to notate when we're doing a site survey or measuring a dock pit is the actual physical makeup of the building so do we have cinder block here as far as the, the wall construction is it brick is it poured concrete 
um, and also the makeup of the drive approach. So sometimes we can see concrete uh, or asphalt. Sometimes it's even gravel. We want to make sure that we notate that just so we can get all of our information, bring it back to the shop and make the right decision on the leveler um, and restraint that we want to go to that's going to best suit the customer. Um, and hopefully do it all in one trip to just increase efficiency. Always best practice to take a couple pictures of the makeup so that we can, when we go back to the office, we can remember what we're seeing. We can catch anything that we may have missed without making a second trip out to the site. Another item to keep in mind when doing your site survey is the drive approach slope, whether it's an incline towards the dock face or a decline towards the dock face. We're going to want to know that information for application consideration. We want to measure at least 50 feet out from the dock face and calculate that slope in a percentage, so a rise over run. Um, some quick math will give you that percentage. Um, that's going to come into effect when determining whether or not we want uh, a higher depth bumper um, or if we need to cantilever the dock. Uh, that type of information is relevant uh, to make sure that the truck doesn't come in and hit the building if it's a severe decline and if we're trying to restrain the truck or accommodate a truck that is sloping away, we may need to add, add a longer lip, um, or we may be limited to certain types of restraints depending on the incline or decline of the dock approach. So the, the next measurements we're going to want to take is going to be the length, width, and rear depth of the pit. The key to keep in mind here is we're measuring the pit and not the actual leveler itself. Um, and then there's a few things to keep in mind when we're measuring the rear angle of the leveler, which we'll talk about in a second. So, like we talked about when measuring the length of the pit, we're going to want to go all the way to the dock face, not to the end of the, of the leveler. And all the way to the rear angle of the leveler. So this piece right here is still part of the dock leveler. And typically you'll see a weld line where the leveler is welded to the embedded curb steel. That's where we want to measure to. Um, but just by looking, up, looking at the makeup of the pit, we'll be able to tell how far the concrete is extending. We want to make sure we measure the full length of the pit. So this is at roughly 87 inches here. When going to measure, when going to measure the width, again, we're going to want to go all the way to the curb steel that's embedded in the concrete and not measure just the plate of the dock leveler. That gives us about 73 and a half here. So to make up for some variances in dock length, we may have we may see filler pieces here at the back of the leveler. So we want to make sure we take the full length of the pit into account. Um, sometimes there will be added pieces to this curb angle, and the reason for that would be. If the, if the dock pit is longer than a standard leveler length, we would add a few inches of filler so that we can accommodate the unusual length of the pit, uh, still weld to the rear curb angle, and reach all the way to the dock face or the front of the pit with the dock leveler. Other thing to notate if we're talking about a push button leveler is incoming phase and voltage of the electricity so we can match that phase and voltage on the dock leveler's motor and the control panel. A couple other items to keep in mind when we're finishing up our survey is you always want to notate the height and width of the door opening. Never know when that's going to come into play but it's always something nice to have and if it does come in factor in later then we have that information without going back on site. Other thing to notate would be what the wall conditions are, if we're going to be mounting a control panel, we're going to want to take that into account and also the width in between dock levelers or dock positions to make sure that the control panel we're recommending is going to fit uh, with the existing site conditions. Again, always good practice to take a picture of what you're seeing as well as the measurements so we can refer back to that at a later date. Again, avoiding the redundancy of a second trip out. 
Other than that, like I said, notate all your measurements on a, on a notepad or on a site survey that you can get from any systems regional. And always take a lot of pictures and a lot of measurements. You never know what measurements you might need. It's always to have more than what you need than too little. That pretty much wraps up our site survey video for today. Uh, any questions, you can reach out to Systems LLC or your regional sales manager, and we can point you in the right direction and get you started on your next site survey. Thank you.